Some crimes never fade. Some killers walk free for decades. And some victims lie unnamed, waiting for science that didn't exist. Yet. But today, the old rules of forensic science have been shattered. DNA can draw a face. Lasers can reveal blood washed away 40 years ago. AI can rebuild fingerprints that never existed. And bacteria, pollen, even proteins can testify in court. This is the story of how new forensic technologies, from genetic genealogy to quantum lasers, are solving cold cases once considered impossible. Let's begin. Chapter 1. DNA and RNA Forensics 1. Investigative Genetic Genealogy Investigative Genetic Genealogy begins with a simple idea. Your DNA doesn't just belong to you. It ties you to thousands of relatives across time. When detectives take an old crime scene sample and convert it into a high-density genetic profile, it behaves like an ancestral fingerprint. That profile is compared to millions of people in public genealogy databases, revealing distant cousins, fourth, fifth, even sixth cousins, people who never met the suspect but share threads of the same genetic tapestry. Investigators rebuild entire family trees, eliminate branches based on location or age, and eventually, the tree narrows to a single name. That's exactly how the Golden State Killer, a ghost who terrorized California for 40 years, was finally unmasked. His distant cousins left their DNA on genealogy sites. He did not. But their genetic breadcrumbs led genealogists straight to him. Today, this method stands at the frontier of cold case science. Part detective work, part genetic archaeology, part family history resurrected into justice. 2. DNA Phenotyping the DNA Portrait Some cold cases stall because detectives have DNA but no idea who the person even resembles. DNA phenotyping fills that void by transforming genetic code into a portrait. It interprets genes related to pigmentation, bone structure, hair texture, and ancestry, gradually assembling a face from the microscopic instructions that once shaped a living human being. It doesn't claim perfect accuracy. It reveals probabilities, not photographs, but it narrows a population of millions into a demographic cluster with recognizable features. When investigators revisited the 1,983 murder of Julie Fuller, they had nothing but DNA. But a phenotypic reconstruction showed a man with light eyes, brown hair, and a specific ancestral pattern. That digital face, shared with genealogists, helped guide them toward James Francis Mac Nichols, ending a mystery that haunted Texas for decades. Phenotyping speaks to the public as well, transforming abstract genetics into a human face, inviting communities to recognize the person hidden in the code. 3. RNA Forensics Where DNA reveals identity, RNA reveals context. RNA molecules degrade quickly, but the fragments that survive can expose what kind of cells created a stain, blood or saliva, skin or semen, menstrual fluid or tears. In older cases, stains often blur together. A tiny sample in a fingernail may be challenged as contamination, an argument defense lawyers have used for years. But RNA tells the story differently. RNA evidence recreates the type and moment of biological contact, a vital distinction when old stains are too degraded to interpret visually or with classic DNA tests. Titiri MVAC Wet Vacuum DNA Collection Many cold cases hinge on one painful truth. There simply wasn't enough DNA to analyze. Swabs from the 1970s and 80s often failed because dried fluids sink deep into porous fibers. And once they're dry, they stay hidden. The MVAC changes that. It sprays a sterile liquid onto fabric or porous surfaces, immediately suctioning it back up and capturing cells that normal swabs could never reach. This allows scientists to extract DNA from clothing washed in streams, from ropes left in garages, and even from 50-year-old fabric sealed in evidence bags. In Utah's 1982 homicide, the MVAC finally pulled a suspect's DNA from clothing that had been swabbed multiple times over the decades with no success. The MVAC doesn't just recover DNA, it recovers lost history. 5. Next Generation Sequencing and YSTR Expansion Old DNA often breaks into fragments too small for traditional forensic testing. NGS overcomes this limitation by reading DNA in overlapping pieces stitching them together like solving a genetic puzzle. Expanded YSTR analysis 
examines dozens of markers on the Y chromosome, making it possible to identify a male lineage even when the sample is mixed with female DNA or heavily degraded. These tools breathed new life into the Austin yogurt shop murders, where 1991 evidence yielded only shallow, inconclusive results. When investigators reanalyzed it decades later, NGS reconstructed richer genetic profiles, and expanded YSTR testing revealed additional male lineage information that older kits could not detect. NGS can salvage what seemed scientifically unsalvageable. It gives old samples a second chance at being heard. 6. Environmental DNA Edna. Sometimes there's no body, no weapon, no fibers, nothing but the landscape itself. But water, soil, and sediment collect microscopic biological traces from anything that passes through them. Environmental DNA sampling taps into this silent archive. While Edna has not yet solved a publicly documented homicide, it is increasingly used in forensic search operations helping investigators identify locations where human biological material may once have been, even when physical remains have long disappeared. This technology is reshaping search operations. Lakes, forests, wells, and abandoned sites become biological memory banks, able to guide investigators toward or away from places connected to the missing. Chapter 2 Chemical and Biological Trace Forensics 7. Proteomics, the protein fingerprint. When DNA burns, dissolves, or degrades beyond recognition, proteins endure, their amino acid sequences remain intact long after genetic material is lost. Proteomics analyzes these proteins with mass spectrometry, revealing whether a sample is human, what tissue it came from, and sometimes, through unique protein variations, narrowing down individual identity. Proteomics thrives where DNA dies, in fires, explosions, or decades of environmental exposure, making it one of the most powerful tools for identifying remains when nothing else is left to speak. 8. Microbial Forensics – Bacteria as Witnesses Every human carries a microbial signature, a unique community of bacteria on the skin. When we touch objects, we leave those bacteria behind creating an invisible microbial fingerprint. While microbial forensics has not yet solved a named homicide case, research shows that microbiome signatures can link personal items to individuals and differentiate between handlers of objects like phones, watches, or tools, even when fingerprints are smudged or DNA is degraded. Microbial forensics is particularly potent in scenarios where criminals attempt to erase traditional traces. You can remove fingerprints, you can bleach DNA, but removing your microbial identity is far harder. 9. Pollen Evidence – Botanical Signatures Pollen is microscopic, persistent, and location-specific. Each region has a unique mix of plant species, and even after decades, pollen grains cling to shoes, clothes, and hair. Pollen tells a geographical story, connecting individuals to landscapes with a detail so subtle it bypasses human memory entirely. 10. Sweat Chemistry – Molecules of Emotion Molecules degrade in measurable ways that reflect how long ago they were deposited. Although sweat chemistry has not yet solved a specific named cold case, researchers are developing methods to measure the chemical aging of fingerprints and sweat residues, potentially allowing investigators to determine whether an object was handled recently or years earlier. Sweat chemistry turns the body's unconscious reactions into evidence, an emerging frontier in reconstructing timelines. 11. LIBS – Laser-Induced Breakdown Spectroscopy LIBS uses a laser to vaporize microscopic layers of a surface, reading its elemental composition like a chemical barcode. LIBS is a reminder that every object carries a molecular history, and lasers know how to read it. Chapter 3 AI – Machine Learning Forensics 12. AI Fingerprint Reconstruction In the past, a smudged fingerprint meant failure, missing ridges, blurred loops, incomplete whorls. But AI can learn ridge flow patterns from millions of fingerprint samples and reconstruct the missing pieces with astonishing accuracy. While AI fingerprint reconstruction has not yet been credited with solving a publicly documented cold case, 
Forensic laboratories are already using the technology to enhance degraded or partial prints, turning previously unusable evidence into searchable patterns. AI doesn't just enhance prints, it resurrects them. 13. AI 3D Craniofacial Reconstruction When only a skull remains, identifying a victim becomes a race against time. Traditional clay reconstructions are artistic, subjective, and limited. But modern AI uses CT scans and deep learning models to rebuild soft tissue, predicting muscle depth, fat distribution, and facial contours. AI-enhanced 3D reconstruction helped bring national attention to the buckskin girl case. Combined with forensic genealogy, it led to the identification of Marsha King after 37 years. AI reconstructs not just a face, but an identity, a memory, and a missing chapter in someone's life story. 14. QCL Infrared Blood Imaging Quantum cascade lasers emit light in frequencies that interact specifically with blood proteins even when stains are invisible to the naked eye. Cleaners can scrub carpets, killers can bleach walls, time can fade color. But blood proteins absorb infrared wavelengths in a distinctive pattern. QCL imaging has been used in UK cold case reviews to reveal blood traces hidden for decades, even when the specific case details remain confidential. QCL turns ordinary surfaces into illuminated crime scenes. Even years later, systematic summary and correlation. Across all these technologies, genetic, chemical, and computational, one truth becomes unmistakable. Forensic science is no longer a single discipline. It is now a system, a living ecosystem of methods that complement, reinforce, and elevate one another. What used to be a linear checklist, fingerprints, fibers, DNA, has transformed into a multi-layered network of overlapping clues, where each method fills the blind spots of another. At the foundation lies the identity layer. DNA, RNA, genealogy, phenotyping. These tools answer the most fundamental question in any investigation. Who is this person? But they don't stop there. They reveal ancestry, phenotype, sex, lineage, and biological context. They tell us not only who left a stain, but whether the stain was blood or saliva, whether the DNA came from skin or from deeper tissue, and whether it belonged to a living suspect or a long-buried victim. This layer is the modern equivalent of a name, a digital identity in molecular form. Above it rests the event layer, the world of chemistry, biology, and environmental clues. Proteins survive where DNA fails, pollen speaks for landscapes, and soil records the presence of bodies long vanished. Bacteria cling to objects as silently as fingerprints. Sweat chemistry preserves the emotions of a moment, stress, fear, adrenaline, long after the mind has forgotten. Together, these traces reconstruct movement, contact, and environment. They describe where someone traveled, how they interacted with an object, and what subtle events unfolded at the scene. If DNA gives investigators a list of who, these methods provide the how, where, and when. And then comes the interpretive layer, where artificial intelligence and advanced imaging step in. AI reconstructs fingerprints from smudges, faces from bones, and timelines from fragmented clues. Quantum lasers lift patterns invisible to the human eye. Machine learning sees symmetry, patterns, and consistencies that human investigators could never detect. This layer doesn't create new evidence. It interprets and amplifies what already exists. It turns fragments into clarity and converts shadows into sharply defined answers. When all three layers merge, the system becomes exponentially more powerful than any one method alone. DNA might identify a suspect, but chemical traces show they were stressed, sweating, and present at the exact location of the crime. RNA might tell you the stain came from skin cells under a victim's nails, while AI-enhanced fingerprints confirm the suspect handled the object used in the assault. Pollen may place a victim in a remote field, while Edna confirms a body was there even when no remains remain. Laser imaging might reveal the wiped blood pattern, while genealogy leads detectives to the one person who fits the biological and geographic signature. Each technology verifies and strengthens the others. Where genealogy provides a name, phenotyping provides a face. Where chemistry provides location, Edney confirms biological presence. Where AI fills in missing ridge detail, YSTR analysis links lineage. No method operates alone. 
They interlock like a forensic puzzle, each piece locking the next into place. This integrated system also protects against error. If one method is ambiguous, another resolves it. If DNA is partial, proteins step up. If fingerprints are smudged, AI reconstructs them. If a body is gone, environmental DNA remembers. If stains are cleaned, infrared lasers reveal the ghost of what once happened. This synergy is what makes modern cold case investigations so formidable. For the first time in history, past crimes face not just a single scientific tool, but an entire network of cross-checking disciplines. A molecular, chemical, and computational alliance. It is no longer about finding a single smoking gun. It is about assembling a mosaic of microscopic truths that all point in the same direction. And this is why cold cases worldwide, once hopeless, forgotten, or buried under the weight of time, are now falling open. Not because of one miracle method, but because forensic science has become systemic, multidimensional, self-correcting, and capable of resurrecting a complete picture from fragments that once seemed meaningless. Time used to be the greatest obstacle in solving murders. Now, with enough layers of science, time has become irrelevant. Prospectus, the future of forensics. What happens when all these technologies evolve further? Imagine reconstructing a suspect's footsteps in a forest using environmental DNA on leaves. Imagine determining the emotional state of an assailant through stress metabolites left on a weapon. Imagine AI generating a minute-by-minute -minute recreation of a crime based purely on trace molecules. Imagine a world where cold cases simply disappear. We are approaching an era where evidence never truly dies, because science is learning how to resurrect it. And in this future, the past will always reveal the truth. If this journey into the science of cold case breakthroughs gave you a new perspective on how the past can be rewritten, consider supporting the channel. Your likes, your comments, and your subscription help bring more stories like this to life. Stories where forgotten evidence speaks, where victims are remembered, and where justice refuses to fade. Thank you for watching. Stay curious, stay critical, and I'll see you in the next investigation.